Good morning. My name is Councillor Gord Perks. I am the chair of the Toronto East York Community Council. The clerk has confirmed that we have quorum, so I'd like to now call meeting 20 to order. Welcome, everybody. Today's meeting is being held with members of council participating both in person and by video conference. City staff are also connected to the meeting by video conference. As City Hall remains closed to the public, to participate electronically, you can watch the meeting streaming live on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Toronto City Council Live. I ask everyone for their patience with any delays and technical issues. The clerk staff have connected all registered speakers to the meeting by audio. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting the Toronto East York Community Council page at toronto.ca forward slash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. Clerk's IT staff will also be available to assist members with their devices. I would like to remind staff to keep their microphones muted and their videos turned off unless they need to answer questions or speak to the committee. This will, be, this will make it easier for me as chair and for those watching on YouTube to observe the members as they participate in the debate and vote on items. For those members who are joining us remotely, please keep your microphone muted unless you wish to question staff or speak to an item and ensure that your video is turned on. As part of each item, I will ask members to raise their hand or unmute their microphones if they wish to question staff or speak. I will then create a speakers list and will call on members when it is their turn to speak. When voting on an item, I ask that members ensure that they turn on their video if applicable and to raise their hands to indicate their vote. Members, I want to remind you that you must submit and approve your motions by email. Staff are available at teycctoronto.ca to help with motions. If there are any visiting members of Council attending the meeting today, I encourage you to turn on your video so that I know you are present and can give you the opportunity to ask questions of staff or speak. This will also assist the clerk staff to record attendance for the meeting. Although we are in different locations and meeting remotely today, the Community Council would like to acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the trad traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the w and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Members, are there any declaration of interest? Councillor Bradford. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to declare an interest on item TE 19.4. Uh, 2100 to 2110 Young Street and 812 Manor Road West OPA zoning amendment and rental housing demolition applications. Uh, the nature of my interest is that my partner is a okay. planner on these files uh, and I've submitted the conflict of interest forms uh, on these items to clerks. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, just, just for clarity's sake, you said 19.4. Did you mean 20.4? Or 20.3, perhaps? This is meeting 20. Uh, what's yes. the- Yes, yep, absolutely. Uh, 20.3, 276 and 290 Merton Street. 20.3, thank you very much. Sorry, and thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I assume all the forms have been sent in. Are there any other declarations of interest? Seeing none, can I have a motion to confirm the minutes from the meeting of October 15, 2020? Councillor Layton, all those in favour, please raise your hands. Opposed, if any, that carries. Okay, we'll begin our agenda run, rundown. Our first uh, item for the rundown is TE 20.15, designation of fire routes and amendment to chapter 880, fire route 100 Gamble Avenue. Uh, that's in Councillor Fletcher's ward. She's not with us yet, so I will hold that in her name, in my name.
Next, assumption of services, Sudbury Street extension from Queen Street West to Abel Street, Section 37 agreement, AT 248 Core Servicing Agreement, City of Toronto Bylaw Number 1169-2009 OMB, Plan 66R-24748. Councillor Bylaw. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, move staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.17215 Lakeshore Boulevard East Public Art Plan. Councillor Cressy. And sorry, Chair, could you just confirm the number? I, I missed that. Two, item TE 20.17215 Lakeshore Boulevard East Public Art Plan. I, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I will move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Item TE 20182920 Old Weston Road Official Plan Amendment and zoning amendment application preliminary report. Councillor Bailao. Thank you. I move uh, staff recommendations with the expanded uh, notice okay. area. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Item TE 20.19-1134 through 1140 Young Street official plan and zoning amendment bylaw application preliminary report. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I believe we will be going with the staff recommendations, please. Okay, on the staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 2020, 334 to 350 Bloor Street West and two through six Spadina Road Zoning bylaw amendment and rental housing demolition applications preliminary report. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I have an amendment to the item to expand the notification area to 240 meters. We're being very precise. Okay. Uh, we'll take the amendment and the item together. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 20.21. 419 through 431 College Street, official plan amendment and zoning amendment applications, preliminary review, Councillor Layton. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. My apologies, I had a bit of a connection issue on, on my end. Uh, we'll be supporting the staff recommendations, um, or I'll advance the staff recommendations. Uh, just to note, this is a 70 story building on top of the, uh, that glass hydro building on at the corner of college and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, yep. university. So this is a, a rather significant deviation from the current, uh, uh the, the current, uh, planning regime in that space. Goodness me. Um, okay. Sorry. No. College Street is sneaky D's. This one's sneaky D's. The next one's that big building on the university. Oh, okay. Well, this is sneaky D's, so we all. Okay. On item TE2021, could I have the screen so I can see the councillors? Thank you. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.22, 700 University Ap Avenue, zoning amendment application. Preliminary report, Councillor Layton. Now you can horrify us. I'll move, I'll move the staff recommendations and again, refer back to my comments about the height of this particular building. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. <coughs> Item TE 20.23185 Beloyal Street and eight Hailton Crescent, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application, Preliminary Report, Councillor Matlow. I move the recommendations. 
All those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.241913 through 1951 Young Street, 17 through 21 Millwood Road, and 22 Davisville Avenue, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application, Preliminary Report, Councillor Mallow. I move the recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.25252 Parliament Street, Zoning Amendment Application, Preliminary Report, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Councillors. Uh, I will be moving a motion if the clerk. Um, actually, Councillor Wong Tam, if I could, if I could, uh, for one reason or another, the motion only arrived this second, so I'm going to hold this one down for a minute so the clerks have an opportunity to prepare it. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, item TE 20.26, new pedestrian bridge connection for Sick Kids Hospital, 175 Elizabeth Street. Councillor Layton. I'll support the staff recommendations. On the staff. And the hospital. On the staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.27, car share vehicle parking area, various locations delegated. Uh, who would like to move that? Councillor Layton, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.28, removal of on-street accessible parking spaces, October 2020, delegated. Councillor Layton. I'll move the staff recommendation. On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.29, Construction staging area, 1 Bloor Street West, Balmudo Street. Councillor uh, Layton. I'm going to hold this down for the moment. Please. Okay, very good. Item TE 20.30, construction staging area, 481 University Avenue, 210 Dundas Street West. 70 Centre Avenue and 137 Edward Street. Councillor Layton. Yes, I'll support the um, staff recommendation, recommendations and just note this won't impact the bike lane on University Avenue. Um, neither will it, in, should it impact uh, travel lanes. Thank you and my thanks to staff to making sure that's happening. Councillor Layton. Um, I'm informed that uh, there's a motion that your office filed on this item with the clerks. Should I hold it while you straighten that out? I sure will. Okay. I thought the motion was for 29. Maybe not. We'll figure this out. Yeah. So we'll get in touch with clerks and we'll sort that out. Okay. Item TE 20.31, construction staging area. 79 through 85 Shooter Street, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I will need to hold this item down. Okay. We're working on a motion to further strengthen the, uh, the, the pedestrian uh, road safety piece. Okay, thank you. Item TE 20.32, parking amendments. Melville Avenue between Shaw Street and Christie Street. Councillor Layton. Unfortunately, um, the community hasn't advanced their petition yet, and so I'm hoping to, to be granted another extension. I believe staff should have that motion. If there is not one, then I'll give the time frame of first meeting in January. So we'll defer this to the January meeting of Toronto East York Community Council? Yes. Okay. On the motion to defer, all those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.33, Parking Amendments, Main Street, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the staff recommendations, please. 
On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.34, Extension of Permit Parking Hours, Roxton Road, Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'll support the staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.35, Extension of Permit Parking Hours, Victor Avenue. I will hold that as Councillor Fletcher is not with us yet. Chair, I've been here for quite a while. Oh, I'm there you the are. Camera. I've been here. I voted on many things already. I'm so sorry, Councillor. I'm, I'm trying to keep That's track okay. of four sets of documents no and a problem. screen. Um, no, I get it. I got it. So I'm fine for that. Yes, I'll tell you. Are there, I, um, there's a motion in there that was sent by my staff to, uh, to the clerk. There it okay. is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so on Councillor Fletcher's motion to defer, all those in favour, opposed, carried. And I, Mr. Chair, I yes. think you did 2015. We'll come back uh, to it after we finish the rundown. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Item TE 20.36, extension of permit parking hours, Norwood Terrace, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.37, traffic calming, Bain Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, and I have a motion there, Mr. Chair. Staff have it, there it is, it's going to December 2nd. Okay, so we have a motion to defer it to December. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.38, traffic calming, First Avenue, Councillor Fletcher. Same thing, Mr. Chair. We're just going to defer that one to December 2nd. Okay, on the motion to defer, all those in favour, opposed, carry. Item TE 20.39, traffic calming, speed humps, Gillard Avenue, Councillor Fletcher. Getting a little boring because we're going to do exactly the same thing again. Okay, on the check. motion to defer to December, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.40, traffic calming, Glen Stewart Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have a motion uh, submitted to clerks to implement the traffic calming measures. On Councillor Bradford's motions, all those in favour, opposed, carry. Item TE 20.41, reopen item TE 12.47, all-way stop control Poplar Plains Road and Clarendon Avenue, North Intersection. Councillor Matlow. I move that. So on the motion to reopen, all those in favour, we need to see the screen please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Um, Councillor Matlow, did you want to move the recommendation now? I would, Mr. Chair, thank you. On the recommendation, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, just on a, a point of personal privilege. You have the floor. Uh, just uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, I have to step out of the meeting for a brief moment, and I have items coming up. Uh, Councillor Layton uh, um, has indicated he, he's prepared to take carriage of them, and I just want to, to indicate that that has my support. Thank you very much, and thank you for all the hard work you're doing right now. Um, you're in good hands with Councillor Layton, as always. Right. So I need a motion to introduce uh, new business items. TE 20.42 through TE 20.61. Councillor Wong Tam, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, okay, so why don't we uh, work our way through those right now? We're, we're not yet at 10 o'clock. Item TE uh, 20.42, appointments to Swansea Town Hall Community Centre Board of Management. Uh, I'll move that. All those in favour, opposed, carried. 
Item TE 20.43, appointments to the Board of Management of the Cecil Community Centre. Councillor Layton. I'll move the recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.44, appointments to the Apple Grove Community Complex Board. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'm happy to move these great folks onto that board. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.45, appointments to the Board of Management of the Eastview Neighbourhood Community Centre. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, I'm also happy to move these great folks onto that uh, Board of Management. And just say both of those AOCs, Apple Grove and Eastview, have really been outstanding during the pandemic for their work on food. And Apple Grove worked with TCHC Don Somerville. So it, it, it's just fantastic. So thank you to both of those agencies. Thank you. I'll be happy to support it then. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Appointment to the, commu the Community Centre 55 Board, Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to uh, move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.47, Speed Limit Reductions, Glen Lake Avenue. I'll move the recommendations in my letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.48, Comprehensive Neighbourhood Streets Plan, Wallace Emerson Area. Uh, Councillor Bailao. Move recommendations in the letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.49, Implementation of Permit Parking on Sousa Mendez Street between Ruskin Avenue and Wallace Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Move recommendations in the letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.50, DuPont and Bathurst intersection of improvements. Councillor Layton. I have an amendment. I don't, I don't think clerks have it yet. Okay, I'll hold that in uh, your name. Not quite good. Thank you. Item TE 20.51, DuPont and Christie intersection improvements. Councillor Layton. I'll hold that item down as well. Okay. Please. Item TE 20.52, Parking Amendments Huron Street. Councillor Late. Yes, thank you very much. I'll move the recommendations in the letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.53, Fox, Fox Bar Road Traffic Management <coughs> and Turning Prohibitions. Councillor Matlow. Councillor Matlow. Item 53, Fox Bar. Road. I apologize, I didn't unmute myself. I, I move it. Okay, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.54, realignment of permit area 8D to exclude 1285 Queen Street East. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'm moving to introduce this, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's been added already, Councillor Fletcher. This would this would be moving the recommendations in your letter. Oh yeah, I'm moving that recommendation. Yes, okay. I am. Thank you. Good. Um, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.55, request to demolish the residential dwelling unit 995 Kingston Road. Councillor Bradford. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to move staff recommendation number two, which is what is shown here as one. Okay, so we'll move option two, which is to approve the application without conditions. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.56, continuing implementation of permit parking on Coxwell. Someone, uh, is someone typing with their microphone live? Mike. My apologies. I'm gonna... Oh, I think there were two of you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Item TE 20.56. Banana cam. Yeah. <laughs> Get up the banana cam. Ah, sigh. Okay. Item TE 20.56, continuing implementation of permit parking on Coxwell Avenue between Eastwood Drive and Dundas Street East. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I would like to uh, move the recommendations in my letter, please. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.57, 1, 
327 through 1333 Queen Street East Permit Parking Realignment. Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Fletcher, if you could uh, unmute. To do that, thank you. Um, I'm just going to hold this, uh, Mr. Chair, please. Thank you. Okay. Item TE 20.58, request to reopen. Item TE 19.52, parking amendments, Market Street. Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you very much. Uh, I move to reopen the item and then to move. Um, uh, All those in favor uh, of reopening? Place item in. Okay, that carries. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Okay, members, um, items 59 through 61 were just circulated a few moments ago, so we'll, they are online. Um, I would ask you to take a look at them. Councillor Fletcher, yep. uh, one of your what's items. I'm, I'll be there with you. I think it's 2015, Mr. Chair, and I'm happy to move that. It's the fire uh, route on Gamble. Okay, item TE 20.15, designation of fire routes and amendment to chapter 880, fire route for 100 Gamble. Uh, Councillor Fletcher has moved it. All those in favor, opposed, carried. And I will note that this was inadvertently attributed to Councillor Bailao, which it shouldn't have been. Okay. Uh, why don't we start our timed items? Yeah. Yeah. I just... Yeah. Um, item TE 20.1. 40 and 50 Service Road, 446 Lakeshore Avenue, 425 Lakeshore Avenue, 1 Muggs Island Park, 339 Queens Key West, 318 and 330X Queens Cape, and 350 Lakeshore Boulevard West, Official Plan Amendment Final Report. We have two deputants listed on this item. Uh, first, we have Michael Bissett. Michael, are you with us? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my, uh, Mike Bissett here from Bowsfield, senior representing NWAVE. Um, myself and also Kim Sayers from RV Anderson have registered um, only for the purposes of um, speaking to the item in a manner of ask, answering any questions. So um, this just, just Michael, if I could the, interrupt, if I could interrupt, sorry, you're, yeah. you're, you're each reg registered separately. Do you want two separate groups of five minutes or is one fine? No, no, I was going to say there's no, we're, we're not making any presentations. Okay. We just wanted to be available to answer any questions. This is in relation to an OPA, in relation to the Deep Lake water cooling expansion. We've been working hard with staff on uh, implementing. And I just, I wanted to also register because I wanted to take this opportunity to thank staff and that would be planning, parks, real estate, and the council's office for all the hard work to get us to this point and continue to advance this project. Um, but uh, we're just here to answer any questions there may be on this item. Thank you very much. Thank Are you. there any questions of the deputants? I don't see any. Michael, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Uh, Councillor Layton, this is one of Councillor Cressy's items. Yes, on this item, there is an amendment that the clerk should have. There was a revised amendment uh, circulated this morning, I believe. Okay, we'll have that up in a second. Thank you. And I'll introduce the motion as it appears on the screen and thank um, Councillor Cressy's staff for bringing this forward. Any questions of the mover? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of the, well, we'll take the amendment and the item all as one. All those in favor, 
Opposed? That carries. Item TE 20.2, 1 through 7 Young Street, application to lift the holding provisions H on phase 2, final report. I have one deputant listed, Jason Park. Jason? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of, uh, of Council. My name is Jason Park. I'm, I'm Council for the Applicant Landowner Pinnacle International 1 Young LTD and Pinnacle International 7 Young LTD. Um, the subject application is the lifting of a holding provisions for the phase two building, which is a second uh, mixed use building on the north parcel. We've had an opportunity to review the report. We support the recommendations set out in the report. And I'm here to answer any questions that, uh, uh, that the councillors may have. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? I don't see any. Councillor Layton. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.3, 276 and 290 Merton Street. Zoning amendment application, final report. I have Mr. some- Mr. Chair, I'm gonna leave the meeting now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll note that in the minutes. Um, item TE 20.3, uh, I've called it. I have uh, a number of different deputants. First, uh, Jack Winberg. Hello, Jack. We we don't seem to have Jack with us. Michael Tucci. Michael is not here. Can you hear, Can you hear me? Oh, who's this, please? This is Michael Tucci speaking. Good morning, Michael. Um, you'll have five minutes to share your thoughts with us. Please start whenever you're ready. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of council and staff. Uh, I just wanted to sort of send uh, Mr. Winberg's regrets. He, uh, I'm with Rockport. He was not able to join. Uh, so I want to apologize on his behalf and send his regrets. I am here on behalf of Rockport simply to answer any questions. And we understand that Councillor Matla will be uh, bringing forward a motion to uh, make a, a very minor amendment to the recommendations from the staff report. We are supportive of of, uh, of that motion and the recommendations that follow, uh, and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Michael? No, seeing none. Michael, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you. Greg Pietsetsk. No. Philip Kiame. No. Michael Bissett. Good morning. It's Mike Bissett again with Bowsfields. I am the planner on this file with uh, Rockport. Uh, again, we're just here to answer any questions. Um, and just, just to note, that the, there would be that motion that that came from discussions with the neighbors in order to address um, issues and concerns raised by the neighbors. So this specifically would address those. Um, and, but if there's any questions, we're available to answer. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? Seeing none. That completes the list of deputations that I have. Sorry, one, one moment, please. Oh, I understand uh, we have Greg Sizek now. Greg? Greg, Gregory, can you make sure that you've connected your microphone? We're showing that we're clear on our, our end.
Gregory, could you try again, please? Hello? Ah, Hello? there you are. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> um, you'll be given five minutes to make your remarks to Community Council. Please start whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, so I uh, represent Your Angus Homes, Inc. Uh, we filed a, a written submission that summarizes, um, well, gives a bit more detail on what I'm about to say, but essentially we operate uh, homes for people with dementia, and one of them is beside the 276, 290 Merton property. And we've had discussions on and off with Rockport for a couple of years now. And uh, as of this morning, there was another change that they apprised us of, which looks like a favorable change, but we just learned about it about half an hour ago. Um, in any event, uh, we've been in discussions with the planning department over w what our development rights will be um, with the Rockport development in place. And so our request to council, which is in the letter I filed this morning, was just that they allow us some time to continue these discussions with the planning department and uh, firm up um, get a better understanding of what our, our rights are after after the uh, Rockport property goes up. So we haven't proposed any delay in anything. We just would like the planning department to continue discussions with us and um, ask that the community council support our discussion with city staff and request that the planning staff report directly to city council on on our issues, our concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the deputy? Yes. Councillor Matlow, you have the floor. Greg, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to ask you a question, which is, um, would you please, uh, would you have an opportunity today to check your email inbox to see if there's an email from Denise, my assistant, which I believe she was, she's working on responding to you this morning, to the email we received this morning, to reassure you that we will certainly undertake to pull together all the right players to make sure that your needs are addressed and uh, that you get the information that you need. There wouldn't have been time to draft a motion uh, when we only received your email at 8.30 this morning. However, uh, the results, uh, we, we will get there together and I will make sure we all come together. So would you please uh, check your inbox? Thank you, Councillor. I will do that. I hadn't received it as of a few minutes ago, but <laughs> I understand this was, this was all happening very quickly. Thank you very much. We'll work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're all the wiser for that exchange. Um, are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Matlow, the floor is yours. I have a motion, and with that, I'll move the recommendations. Are there any questions of the mover? Seeing none, um, we'll take it all as a package on item 20.3, Councillor Matlow's amendments and the balance of the motion item. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.4, 7781 and 83 Mutual Street, Part lock control exemption application, final report. I have a couple of deputants listed. Mark Iona. Mark, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Mark, you thank, welcome. Uh, you have five minutes to address the community council. Good morning, councillors. My name, as mentioned, is Mark Yonia from Tribute Mutual Street Limited regarding 77 to 83 Mutual Street at Sigmalisk is also on the call on behalf of Tribute. Uh, this is regarding our application for part lot control exemption. We don't have any presentation, but I just wanted to be on the call to answer any questions if there were any that came up. If there are no questions, I'll just take this opportunity to thank staff for their work on this file and uh, and leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? No, seeing none. Signe uh, Lisk. Signe? Good morning. Um, as Mark uh, mentioned, I'm only here to uh, assist this committee if there is any questions. Um, 
Thank you. Unless there are questions, I'll just thank everyone. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? Seeing none. Okay, that's my complete list of deputants. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the recommendations in the staff report. Okay, on the recommendations from staff, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.5, 6 0 through 6 4, Queen Street East, and 131 through 135, Church Street Zoning Amendment Application Final Report. I have one deputant listed, Roy Varakelli. Roy? Roy, could you connect your audio, please? Roy, we're still unable to hear you. Could you check that your audio is connected? No, we're not having any luck with Roy. Um, I'm very sorry we have to move along. Are there any questions of staff on this item? I don't see any. Councillor Wong Tam, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. I would like to move the recommendations in the staff report uh, and to cite that this particular application is sitting at the corner of the north east corner of Church and Queen. Uh, it is a, a tall building coming down the podium. Uh, and of course, um, uh, there are not many applications or final reports that speak to the Ontario line. Uh, but because of this placement of this particular application, there's actually a mention in reference uh, to ensuring that the, uh, the building as it uh, as is proposed and with all this construction is going to uh, situate itself um, in, a, in a way that it will allow for facilitation of the, of the Ontario line. And, uh, and I think that this is uh, going to be part of the, the constant and ongoing challenges uh, as we get ready for the tunneling, uh, the massive construction, which of course will be impactful, uh, but not to mention the fact that we already have very busy streets with already existing construction sites uh, all over the place. Uh, it makes it very difficult for, uh, uh, for someone to be walking through the area and, uh, and, uh, and we know that the changes that are coming are probably going to reveal that uh, it's going to further uh, some of those uh, uh, challenges. I do want to cite, Mr. Chair, that this particular application, um, what um, is also coming with a Section 37 package, uh, over $2.25 million going directly to affordable housing, which I know the Deputy Mayor is going to care deeply about, uh, as well as uh, uh, local park and, uh, and streetscape improvements. Uh, but also, uh, we are we're carving out in the base and the floor area of the building uh, community spaces. As uh, we start to see um, and continue to see uh, the loss of, uh, of, of, of uh, commercial space at the base of buildings uh, at the storefront, uh, we're trying to put them back wherever we can. And there'll be 5,000, approximately 5,000 square feet of community space that will be conveyed to the city and built out for the city to our specifications, where we can then in turn um, provide affordable uh, commercial rental uh, to uh, area agencies and businesses uh, as well as nonprofits, so that's uh, the the overall uh, strategy to try to do the very best we can to manage the growth that's coming in. Uh, we don't necessarily have the right to say no uh, to tall buildings, as we know, especially since uh, the OMB uh, has come back as LPAT and has gotten bigger and stronger. I have struggled with this application largely because of its size, uh, its massing, its height. Um, but I also think that the city planning staff and urban design staff have done everything they can. Uh, along with myself and transportation to try to um, uh, ensure that this building and this application fits in. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that the, uh, the tower will not be uh, attractive because I've worked with um, the architect Roy Vera Kelly before in Yorkville and he's put together some very beautiful, uh, elegant structures there. Um, but I am troubled by 
the, the, the volume of activity that continues to come marching down on our, our main streets. And, uh, and this is the very best we can, uh, this is where we've landed today. And I will continue to work with staff in the community to make sure that we continue to do this work uh, in the days moving ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of the mover? I don't see any. So on the recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. <clears throat> Item TE 20.6287 Davenport Road and 141 through 145 Bedford Road, official plan zoning amendment application and rental housing demolition application, request for directions report. I have one deputy listed, Josh Fullen. I'm told Josh is not with us. Are there any questions of staff on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Layton, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm prepared to move the uh, the staff recommendations on the file. This is a um, a, a difficult site and file because of just the way that um, our official plan treats this area of, um, of, uh, of Davenport at Bedford. Um, we have given approvals for taller buildings on the north side, but because of the proximity to, um, to, to, to lower rise buildings on the south side, it has been deemed not appropriate at this site. And so um, the application that came in is rather aggressive. Uh, we have tried working with the applicant uh, through the beginnings of a working group with community associations. Unfortunately, it hasn't seen any movement on the uh, the built form, and so we are being asked for direction so that we can go fight it at the, the LPAC. Thank you. Thank you. Questions of the mover? I don't see any. On the recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. <clears throat> Item TE 20.7, 65 through 83 Raglan Avenue, zoning bylaw amendment application request for directions report. I have no listed deputants. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Matlow, the floor is yours. I'm going to move moving to send this to Council without recommendations. He's making a motion to send it to Council without recommendations. On Councillor Matlow's motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.8, inclusion on the City of Toronto Heritage Register, intention to designate under Part 4, Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, alterations to a heritage property and authority to enter into a heritage easement agreement, 60 Queen Street East, and 131133 and 135 Church Street. I have no deputations listed. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Wong Tam, you're... It floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.9, intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 41 and 47 Fraser Avenue and 135 Liberty Street. Uh, note that there's a 9A attached, which are the, which is the communication from Preservation Services, I assume. Yeah, Preservation Board, sorry. Uh, I have no deputants listed. Uh, Councillor Layton. <clears throat> yes, th thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. I've been asked by the local councillor to defer this item until the December meeting. Thank you. Okay. I know this property well. Uh, this used to be. <laughs> you yes, do. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand the deferral. Okay. All those in favor of deferring it to the December meeting, that carries. <clears throat> and for the record, Councillor Perks, anyone on community council for that meeting remembers it very well. There you go. Item TE 20.10, alterations to a property designated under Part 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 1067 Young Street. I have no deputants listed. There is also uh, communication from Preservation Board. Uh, questions of staff? I don't see any. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'll um, uh, move the recommendations from the Heritage Preservation Board.
Okay, so just, just for clarity's sake, uh, going forward, uh, unless Preservation Services makes a recommendation that, that's different from staff, actually what we're doing is approving the staff recommendations. Is that okay. correct? Yeah? Then okay. Let's approve the staff recommendations, please. <clears throat> All those in favor, opposed, carried. But they were also the recommendations of the Preservation Board, correct? Yeah. 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 How super groovy is that? Okay. Item TE 20.11, demolition of a property designated under Part 4, Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 33 Avenue Road. And again, there's a communication from the Preservation Board. I do have uh, deputants. Paul Farrelly. Oh, he's not, he's not. Paul will not be making a deputation, I'm told. Brian Brisbane. Brian, could you make sure that you have connected your audio? Okay, is that you, Brian? Yes, I'm here. I can see you. Good morning and welcome. Um, you'll have five minutes to address the committee. Uh, please start whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you. This is going to be a word painting, I assume, because I obviously know visual here. Um, over the last uh, year and a half, we've spent uh, considerable time both uh, with the client, the uh, resident, including ABC, to look at the existing submission and what we now call the improved submission uh, for the Yorkville project. The intent was to develop a better ability to create public realm, both a greater size, space, orientation, and light, one that was more connected uh, both in terms of mews, walkways, passageways, and more viable, literally, in the sense of trees and sunlight. So in order to do that, we rotated the building at an angle that no longer faced other buildings, but rotated it slightly towards Avenue Road. The result is um, the, the, all of the conditions that were set forth before in terms of setbacks, height, uh, FSI remain the same. Uh, it's actually an enhancement in terms of its relationship to the other buildings. But the biggest feature is that the public realm at the lower level <clears throat> has now gone from th roughly 3,000 square feet uh, to over 5,000 square feet, of which it is in almost entirely because of the angular plane, uh, the terracing underneath of the building, and our sun shadow studies uh, will be enveloped in sunshine for, for both parts of the morning and the afternoon. So with that, we developed a public realm that is more programmable. It has uh, a unique water feature in the sense of a large waterfall. That waterfall is partly a base of the reclamation system for stormwater management. Uh, the building itself, it will be the second building in Toronto under Councillor Layton's uh, uh, auspices here uh, to be a vertical forest. Uh, it will have trees that not only contribute to the heat island effect of the city, uh, but also to the viability of uh, the horizontal parks and transmigration that is part of the other project. So in total, what we have now is a much more, uh, I think, responsive design to the public realm in the street. It has direct connectivity into the uh, Yorkville Centre shopping rather than down below grade. It has a connection through to Avenue Road. It opens up the corner of Avenue Road in Yorkville to the rest of the community in a much more public sense, so that when we landscape it all, it will appear very much a part of that extension and not owned or corporate. So we think in the end, this will become a far better, better program for it. It was accomplished by the addition of land where the other access to the Yorkville uh, shopping was before. That inclusion gave us the leeway, the space, the flexibility to open up and create a much more meaningful and, and I think fundamentally sound public realm for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? Seeing none, uh, we have a couple more who have registered. I have next Alan Baker. Alan, can you make sure that your microphone is connected? Oh, I, uh, he's dropped off. Okay. Uh, John Cal Caliando. John? Let's get Good morning, good morning, John. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Cl uh, Mr. Chair and Councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to address this matter. <clears throat> Please go ahead. Oh, we're, we're off and running. Okay, yes, we are. Great. Um, 
So we are uh, the, uh, many of you know us, we're with the uh, ABC Resident Association. We have been working on this file since approximately 2015 or 2014. We are deputing in support of um, what is before you. The, um, this property obviously is very iconic. Um, those of us who came of age uh, uh, in the 60s and 70s, of course, will remember um, Jack Diamond and, and Barton Myers um, uh, creation and how it really uh, came to anchor uh, an important corner of Yorkville and, um, and, and live and liven it. The, uh, however, the, the building as you see it today is actually its third iteration as it relates to heritage. So there's the original Victorian slash Edwardian building. There is the modifications of the, I guess, pop art modifications of uh, um, uh, Jack Diamond and Barton Myers of the uh, late 60s. And then in the 80s, there was a further modification which removed the iconic round windows from the uh, south and squared them. Um, the the building as it exists today, even if we do not uh, agree to their demolition, actually will be changed, will be modified for the fourth time per an OMB settle, uh, per an OMB res, um, ruling that took place two years ago. Um, we, as a as a community group, originally supported um, the heritage designation to leave everything as is back in 2015, I believe. But over uh, a period of a number of years through extensive consultations and working with the then applicant, um, we came to realize that uh, uh, an evolution of, the, um, of York Square was possible and in the public interest. Um, so as a result of that, there is a, um, a development proposal that is as of right that, as I said, will see the building that you see today extensively modified. In uh, and in those in that process, we obviously take these things very seriously. We engage people like Ken Greenberg to help us guide us through this process, um, and um, uh, et cetera. So, and Michael Spaziani and others. Um, the the proposal that uh, Mr. Brisman just spoke to is what we call uh, sort of the last um, piece of the puzzle, which was that at the time of the OMB decision, the site to the immediate east was not part of this parcel, this assembly. And uh, that site to the immediate east is a tunnel, for lack of a better term, I think First Capital might be offended if we call it that, but it's an entryway to uh, what we used to know as Hazleton Lanes is now called Yorkville Village. This proposal uh, consolidates the site, so it's dramatically uh, larger footprint, uh, density actually goes down a bit, but uh, speaking again to what Mr. Brisbane has to say, the public realm now has evolved uh, in dramatically uh, in a very, very positive way. And it's just not for our community. This is something important for the city. And it anchors uh, the sort of western end of Yorkville. As many of you know, we were very successful in achieving extension of Village of Yorkville Park recently to Bay Street, which is pretty monumental. So this would also anchor in terms of public ground to the west. And um, I want to leave you with actually a quote from um, from Mr. Diamond, which uh, I think would be helpful for all of us. So in um, uh, CBC News, December 7th, 2016, Mr. Diamond was asked what he thought of uh, the fact that his buildings may be coming down. So I quote from that article, one person who is not against demolition is architect Diamond, 84. He said he wouldn't mind if his red brick construction was torn down as long as a new building is supported with proper infrastructure and connects pedestrians to the streets, streetscape. Quote, all things it did were really important things to do, he told CBC Toronto Thursday, but it wasn't spectacular architecturally. Cities change, unquote. So I think in a sense, what we've been working for in the next last four or five years is effectively that a, a proposal that evolves that site into a um, far more accessible, far more usable piece of public realm uh, for not just our community, but for the city. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? Seeing none. Um... Are we, I, 
if you could just bear with me, members and, and members of the public, for a minute. We're just trying to sort something out. Okay, I understand that um, Alan Baker has reconnected. Alan, did you want to make a deputy? Could you just could you connect your microphone? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can, Alan. Welcome. Um, so okay. uh, you. you'll have five minutes to address the committee. Please start whenever you're ready. Okay. Thank you very much. Good, mo uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan Baker, and I am the president of the Greater Yorkville Residents Association. Uh, we represent 44 condominium buildings, um, which are home to almost 10,000 residents. I'm speaking this morning to express our support for the current rezoning application, including the demolition of the designated heritage buildings at the corner, known as York Square. Together with the ABC Resident Association, we have been actively engaged in collaborative discussions with the developers for over a year. The developers attended a gyro board meeting where representatives from most of our member buildings attended. The developers made a presentation of their proposal and answered a number of questions. The developers then left the meeting and a fulsome discussion took place. The overall opinion of our board was extremely positive. We felt that the slight twisting of the building provided so many positive changes, including a larger and more accessible public square with much of it open to the sky, more sunlight on Yorkville Avenue, less impeded views of the Hazelton condominium, improved entrance to the Yorkville Village Mall, and a retail jewel box, which will be an architectural, which will be architecturally significant standalone structure that will create a focal point and gateway to Yorkville Avenue. After a discussion at the meeting, the gyro board unanimously approved the new development, including the demolition of the designated heritage buildings. Among those who voted unanimously in favor of the demolition uh, of demolishing the heritage designated buildings was one of our area residents who is a gyro executive and board member, Paul Bedford, a former chief city planner. On another point that should be noted, JIRA does not take the position that all buildings should be torn down to make way for new developments. On several occasions, JIRA strongly supported keeping what we consider to be important heritage buildings and precincts. As an example, we fully supported keeping the buildings on the west side of Young Street between Yorkville and Cumberland and to incorporate them into the new condominium development. And if you recall from last month's meeting, Jira was also actively involved in opposing the U of T proposal on the planetarium site in favor of asking for a heritage study of the Queens Park precinct to protect the district. Not all old buildings are equal. Simply because a building is old, we feel should not automatically make it heritage. The city must be selective in choosing which buildings should be preserved. A well-known resident of the Yorkville area and former Gyre board member until his health issues made it difficult for him to attend meetings is Bill Greer. Bill, as many of you know, is one of Toronto's most respected heritage advocates. I spoke with him a few days ago and once again, Bill confirmed his opinion of York Square. He told me that I could quote him. So I quote Bill as follows. York Square served its purpose at the time, but it has been obsolete for its proposed uses for several decades and I am supportive of it being demolished and being replaced with the proposed development. It is my understanding that one of York Square's original architects, Jack Diamond, does not consider this a heritage property. On behalf of our residents, we are asking that these heritage designated buildings be allowed to be demolished and ask that you please support our position for the benefit of the larger residential community and the many thousands of visitors, visitors to the area. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the deputant? No? Alan, thank you very much for sharing your time with us today and your thoughts. Uh, thank that, you. That concludes our list of deputants. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Layton, I believe this item is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have a motion. Okay, good. That approves the demolition on condition. And this condition also includes um, City Council adopting um, a revised uh, a revised zoning amendment 
Um, and if you can scroll through, it also has some other um, uh, pieces attached about documenting the site and having an interpretation plan in place. This has been a, a particularly difficult file. Um, it was started by my uh, my predecessor, Councillor Wong Tam, in the area uh, with a development that certainly was not ideal uh, for for the site and that went to the Ontario Municipal Board and was approved and it involved uh, protecting the buildings, but only the very basic shell of part of a shell of a building. Um, the uh, much of I think what was celebrated would would have been lost, and it wasn't uh, wasn't the position of the uh, of the city that um, that that uh, that this application should move forward, but it did. Um, and then a uh, a new owner came to the site and was able to. Um, was able to incorporate in some surrounding lands that allowed the building to change its its placement and massing on the site, and uh, resulted in what what is a significantly improved public realm. So we've got um, we've got a big trade off here. It's protect the building uh, and get a development that you know, protect the building in in that you're protecting a wall of a of a building. Um, or uh, and and get a development that, that generally speaking the new owners don't love the community doesn't love uh, and the city doesn't love uh, or get um, an improved building but trading off the loss of a uh, of, of a heritage uh, what would have been left of a heritage asset now I, I think you've heard like we've heard from the two residents associations in the community there is widespread support for this new application and it's uh, uh, in its evolving form, and um, you you haven't been able to see the 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 the, uh, the proposed plans for the public realm, but I think you can trust our deputants in in from the community that say it's a it's a vast improvement. So it isn't without some level of regret that I'm putting this motion forward, uh, but on the understanding that this is something that this community is in desperate need of, and that's more space to move around and to live. In the community that's built that that's growing so quickly uh, around them, um, so I'll put this motion forward um, to to the floor, and uh, we will await the uh, the staff report on the rezoning application uh, before this building is uh, is is demolished. And we will hope in that meantime that city staff and the architect for the applicant can work and the landscape architect for the applicant can perhaps work on different ways of, of, of trying to uh, recognize this particular um, heritage uh, piece of uh, Toronto's heritage in the new uh, in the new development proposal. Um, but uh, it, in order for us to address uh, planning's concerns around the heritage asset, uh, we need to give a ruling on um, uh, on the demolition permit now so that we can proceed with the application. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the mover? I don't see any. Uh, on the motion, all those in favor, opposed, carry. Item TE 20.12, Residential Demolition Application 349 Albany Avenue. I have no deputants listed. Are there any questions of staff? I see none. Uh, Councillor Matlow. Sorry, I'm sorry, Councillor Matlow, just before you begin, um, I'm, yeah. I'm just want to check. Councillor Fletcher, uh, we lost you temporarily. Are you back? Can you just do a voice check so we know you're here? Councillor Fletcher? Okay, uh, Councillor Bradford, could I ask you to sit in frame so that I know that we have quorum? I'm just realizing I only have four members of council that I can see, including, well, three members I can see plus me. So I need one more for quorum. Councillor Bradford, are you there? Or Councillor Bailao? Ah, there's Councillor Bailao. Okay, very good, we have quorum. Um, Sorry to interrupt, Councillor Matlow. I just needed to make sure we had quorum for your item. The floor is yours. I appreciate that. I'm moving recommendation three. 
On recommendation three, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 20.13, residential demolition ap application, 258 Parliament Street. I have no deputants listed. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Wong Tam, the floor is yours. Actually, um, Chair, I do have a question of staff. Um, sure, go ahead. I may have this opportunity now. Thank you. Uh, on the uh, in your report, um, there is a letter that's submitted by the owner that cites that they hope to demolish this one-story structure and replace it with a six-story structure. Uh, but in the same agenda, there's a there's an application for rezoning. Um, that cites a different height um, for this building. So in the letter submitted by the owner on this matter, uh, 252 Parliament Street, they cite that they're going to replace the one-story structure with a six-story building. Uh, but on the planning report, the preliminary planning report for 252 Parliament, which is item 25 later um, in the agenda, they submit an application for rezoning that that, uh, that is asking City Council for the permissions to build a nine-story building. Um, so I'm just curious to know, um, is it uh, is it a nine-story building or a six-story building, or is that letter that was submitted by the applicant, um, I'm going to take it as outdated and incorrect? This is Kamel from Toronto Building through the chair. Um, I, I have a feeling that letter that was submitted uh, is out of date, uh, but I did not compare uh, the... Uh, um, the letter with the uh, with the um, zoning rezoning application. So uh, at this point, I'm I am assuming that that letter is out of date. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's very helpful. I appreciate. It. I have no further questions, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Seeing none, Councillor Wong Tam, the floor is yours. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you very much. I will move the um, uh, the recommendation uh, to approve the demolition. I recognize that this property is uh, is unsecured and uh, and and one that needs to be secured. We've had a number of challenges there, and we don't necessarily want to see this building set on fire uh, and perhaps community members harmed. But I did want to flag for uh, members of community council that there is a discrepancy between uh, this matter before us as the demolition uh, requests. Uh, and the rezoning application, one is the six-story uh, uh, proposal to replace, and then one is the nine-story. So I think we can all take it at face value that the zoning um, amendment requested in the item 25 that comes a little, little bit later is the correct um, uh, replacement structure, or at least the, the request for the replacement structure uh, that the applicant is asking for. And then, of course, we will go through the planning review, have our public meeting with the community, um, and uh, we'll sort through that detail a little bit later on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam, just for clarity's sake, are you moving the demolition with conditions or without? Motion two or three? Option two or three? Uh, mo it's uh, it's to, mo to move to approve with conditions. With I conditions. Okay, sure. thank you. Are there any further questions of the, the mover? Seeing none, we'll take it all as a package. All those in favor, opposed, carry. Okay, this, that brings up item TE20.14, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 241 Wallace Avenue. I have no deputants listed. Are there any questions of staff? I don't see any. Councillor Bailao. Thank you. I would like to move approval of the patio. I believe staff have already the motion. Okay. Uh, on the motion to approve, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, when you can, but I think everyone everyone understood. Yeah. Okay. Um, that brings us to item TE 20.25. 252 Parliament Street Zoning Amendment Application. As I recall, Councillor Wong Tam, you'd submitted a motion on this. I just want to make sure the clerks have it. Okay, Councillor uh, yes, Wong Tam, the floor is yours. 25. Yes, thank you. You're talking about item number 25, correct? Just... Correct. 
Yes, thank you. I'd like to move the recommendation, uh, sorry, my motion. And, and this is exactly the item that I was speaking to um, when we were discussing the demolition application for 252. Uh, so we're, we will proceed um, and host, hold the public meeting, but also to ensure that we have a site plan, uh, an undelegated pr process of the site plan working group uh, as we head to a final report if, uh, if and only if the application gets approved. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Um... On Councillor Wong Tam's motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. That takes us to item TE 20.29. Construction staging area 1 Bloor Street West, Balmudo Street. Councillor Layton, you had held this. Yes, thank you very much. Um, just to, to transportation staff, um, I have a question about what our options are. We have explored, have you explored other options for doing staging? Bloor Street, Young Street, in the alleyway? Uh, Councillor Layton, this is Vince Freddy. Um, my understanding in speaking to construction staging staff is that they have explored all options. And the recommendation to put it on Balmudo isn't ideal, correct? It's realistically the only feasible option at this time. Because if the options were on Bloor or Young, despite the fact that we would also be taking away a lane in both we would be feeding construction vehicles in and out of the intersection of Young and Bloor, in or out of. Um, I'm actually, I would like to defer to construction staging staff who would have more details on, on the, the, the work that they've done. And Craig, are you there to answer? Yeah, I'm here, Vince. Unfortunately, I was just on another call. Um, could you uh, sure, Craig, I can ask again very Craig, quickly. Craig, could I just Craig, just a second, please? Yeah. Just a second. Craig, could I ask that you uh, check that you're close to your microphone or that your volume's up? We're having difficulty hearing you. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Craig. All right. Sorry. the The question from Councillor was. So I would just ask, why have we ruled out the uh, staging happening on Young Street or Bloor Street? Um, the Bloor Street portion is not um, acceptable from a staging perspective because, again, the entire staging area would not be able to abut the site. Um, and having said that, that would also force us to have to close the newly installed bike lanes on Bloor Street, and we would reduce Bloor down to one lane in each direction. Um, so the impacts on the Young and Bloor intersection would be very significant along with closure of the newly installed bike lanes on Bloor Street. Um, and Young Street? Young Street Young Street was looked at as well, but again, the length of the staging area is fairly significant and would also put controls in front of additional businesses south of the subject property on the west side of Young Street. And again, we would go down to one lane in each direction on Young Street, and then that would uh, prohibit our installation of the planned bike infrastructure scheduled for Young Street next year. And is there any is there any possibility of staging on site? Have we examined whether or not they could stage it on their own property? Yes, Councillor. We always that that's our, our starting point when we look at any construction staging. Certainly, we don't want to give up our right of way to be occupied for staging. Our first first question to developers is always stage your construction on site. Um, unfortunately, with planning requirements and conditions that are in that allow us to build, allow developers to build lot line to lot line, there is absolutely no ability to stage construction from private portion. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Council. That's all my questions. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Layton, you have the floor. So I, I'm sure many of you have had a community meeting about construction management plans with your neighbors that don't go well. 
on, on this particular site, we've had four so far. Um, and, and we've explored every possible option on, on this file. I, and it, it is a significant, um, uh, safety concern on Belmudo, but at the same time, there are no, there seems to be no other options. We've exhausted all other uh, possibilities. And it with it is with much reluctance that I'll, I'll I'll adopt the item. This moves it forward. If I understand correctly, it refers the report to council because um, council, despite the fact that this is a small road, um, there is a deviation to our normal uh, uh, protocols on on this particular stage uh, uh, staging that needs council approval. And I if I understand, uh, there'll be more reporting going to council on this item. So it's with much reluctance that after several deferrals, I'll move this on to council. Okay, on the, mo on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.30, construction staging area, 481 University Avenue, 210 Dundas Street West, 70 Center Avenue, and 137 Edward Street. Are there any questions of staff? No, Councillor Layton, the floor is yours. Thank you, I have a technical amendment from staff and I should have say, said this in the last item. I'd like to thank um, uh, transportation staff for their involvement in the previous item and of course this one, but the previous item in particular, um, they have done uh, an enormous amount of work for that, uh, for, for that staging area. And um, I'm sure they do just as much for this one. We just didn't need to have four public meetings to get there. Okay, on uh, with, with the, there was an amendment, right? Yeah, on the amendment and the item together, all those in favor, opposed, carried. We are just breezing through here. <laughs> item TE 20.31, construction staging area, 79 through 85 Shooter Street, Councillor Wong Tam. Do you have any questions or you're just gonna go straight to a motion? Okay. I have questions, uh, Mr. Chair. I do have a motion, and the clerk can put that on the screen. Uh, this motion is to largely um, try to strengthen the existing staff report. I think that staff have done a, a commendable job, um, and uh, they have already amended their, their regular motion with um, uh, items that we have always asked for, including uh, clean debris-free conditions around the construction site, regular sweeping, uh, 24 hour construction posted hotline. Uh, this amendment is to, to go a, an extra distance and uh, and, the, and the members can put, see that it's on the screen. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any questions of the mover? I just need to wait and see my screen. No, seeing none. Uh, all those in, in favor? Opposed, that carries. Okay, members, I need a motion to introduce item TE 20.62, Vision Zero, Improving Pedestrian Safety at Mill Street and Cherry Street. Councillor Wong Tam. All those in favor, opposed, carry. Okay, so now we go to item 2050, DuPont and Bathurst Intersection Improvements. Councillor Layton. Your, your, your microphone is not live, Mike. Mike has no mic. Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, uh, on this item, I'll move the recommendations in the letter. All those in favor of the recommendations in the letter, opposed if any, that carries. Item TE 20.51, DuPont and Christie intersection improvements. Councillor Late. So on this item, I have a motion, and that's to add an automated red light camera at the intersection of Christie and DuPont. This is to, to review the feasibility of it. Okay. So along uh, with um, automated speed control. With uh, the amendment, we'll take the amendment and the recommendation letter all together. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.57. Uh, 1327 through 1333. Queen Street East permit parking realignment. Councillor Fletcher. I'm just going to suggest, Councillor Bradford, you're going to have a uh, conflict on this one. This is a Rockport development, FYI. Just want to 
Don't want you to get caught. Thank you for that. Clerk, should I um, submit the paperwork to you on this? I don't yeah, know. so Councillor Bradford, here's, here's what we'll do. Um, if you could okay. declare the nature of your interest now, uh, you can submit the paperwork sure. following the meeting. Very good, I will have a conflict on this as my uh, partner would be a planner on this file. Thank you very much. Although and if you could just, just uh, step away right. while we deal with the item. Yep, I'm gonna go out of the room. You're going home. <laughs> going out of the room. Uh, yes, so this is one, Mr. Chair, that uh, this is in the new area that I took on and um, that hadn't been done previously as is always done in all of the developments since 2005 in this ward. So I uh, would just like to move that. Thank you. Um, this address is from permit parking in the neighborhood. Members, uh, I've been advised by the clerk that on items where we have an interest, uh, it really is best for these virtual meetings that we do a recorded vote. So uh, sure. could I ask for a show of hands, all those in favor? Councillor Layton, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Bailao, Councillor Matlow, Councillor Fletcher, and myself in the chair. Members, we neglected to do this on item three where Councillor Bradford also had uh, an interest. So I'm gonna move that we reopen that. All those in favor of reconsideration. Opposed if any, that carries. And I'll call for a recorded vote on that item. I'm looking around the screen. Councillor Layton, Councillor Bailao, Councillor Matlow, Councillor Wong Tam, and myself in the chair. Okay. Don't uh, forget me, Councillor. Oh, Fletcher. Councillor Fletcher. I am so sorry that you. you appear sort of randomly across the screen, members. So it, Do it, I? you all just bounce around, and it's very, very confusing, especially for I a very, enjoy. very little brain like me. Um, if someone could alert Councillor Bradford that we're completed those items. Um, did next, a, did you want your nickname to be Pooh Bear? Is that what you're asking for? I don't know that I want it as a nickname. I just want it as an excuse. Um, okay, that takes us to item TE two zero point five nine parking amendments Dover Court Road. Uh, Councillor Bailao. Councillor Bailao. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, move for recommendations in the letter. Okay, all those uh, in favor, opposed, that carries. Mm -hmm. Item TE 20.60, parking amendments, Afton Avenue. Um, again, Councillor Bailao. Move recommendations in the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 20.61, Application for an encroachment permit and partial patio enclosure at 585 Church Street. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, I'd like to move the recommendations to my letter clerk, sir. All those Chair. in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 6 or 20.62, Vision Zero, improving pedestrian safety at Mill Street and Cherry Street. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I'd like to move the recommendations in the letter from Councillor Cressy and I. And if I may just take a minute to, to speak to this particular matter. Um, we, we learned of the unfortunate and tragic death of Tricia Waldron, uh, who is a, a former board member of the Corktown Residence, Residence and Business Association. Uh, and she was also the uh, editor of the Corktown News. Um, this, uh, pr this particular matter um, is one that has been felt um, by the community um, in, 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 in incredibly heartfelt ways. Um, we lost Trish to a collision at that intersection last weekend uh, when she was trying to cross the street at Cherry and Mill. Um, as a pedestrian, she was crossing at the intersection. Uh, she was um, doing what anybody does, is trying to just get from one side of the, of the sidewalk to the other. Uh, as safely as possible. Um, she was struck by a cement truck because there is a lot of construction taking place in that area. And, um, and it's still unclear to us exactly what happened, uh, but I can say that the community um, has experienced a significant loss. 
I know that Councillor Cressy and I are, are both quite moved uh, by, what, by what has happened. And this particular motion is actually um, uh, asking staff to do three things. One is to immediately investigate uh, that intersection uh, and to find out if there are things that we can do in the immediate term to try to make that intersection safer. Um, and even as we don't know all the outcome, all the details surrounding her death, um, and we, we do need to, we do recognize that there are probably ways that we can make every street in the city, every neighborhood has the improve, uh, opportunity for improvement. Uh, the second and third thing that we're asking staff to do is bring us midterm and long -ter longer term solutions. Um, any loss of life in our city is, uh, is especially due to road violence, is, is one too many. Um, and as, as a vulnerable senior, um, we know that, uh, that the city moves at an incredibly fast pace. Uh, Trish is not necessarily someone who, who didn't have access to, uh, to mobility. Uh, however, um, when you have a, a, a vehicle, especially an industrial use vehicle striking a human being, uh, loss of life will occur. And that's exactly what's transpired here. Um, this will never bring Trish back, and uh, we will still be waiting for the result of the investigation to fully understand what, what happened. Uh, but in the interim, I hope that we can do everything we can as a city with the support of our transportation staff to try to fix that intersection. Some of it could have been human error. Uh, it could have been the fact that the, the driver didn't see the, the pedestrian. It could have been um, a, a turn that, uh, that resulted in, um, uh, in, in this loss of life. Whatever it is, we're asking staff to not leave any stone unturned to investigate in any and every single perspective to make sure that no one else uh, will ever be harmed uh, crossing that intersection. And, uh, and with that, Mr. Chair, I submit to you our, our, uh, our letter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on the recommendations in the letter, all those in favor, opposed, carried. I did have a question. For oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. I got ahead of myself. Question of the mover, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Wong Chum, yes, this is a terribly tragic, tragic, tragic event, especially with all of the um, work that went into planning the transportation area in uh, the distillery and West Onlands. Do you happen to know which firm it was or which cement truck that was that was involved in this loss of life? Uh, I do not have that information, Councillor Fletcher. Uh, oh, okay. I will speak to this chair. Thank you. Any other questions of the mover? Seeing none, Councillor Fletcher. Yeah, I'm really uh, going to support this uh, motion that Councillor Wongtam has brought forward. And when I heard about this or read about this, I was very deeply disturbed. These are huge trucks that we have approved so much construction and they are going, tending to go through neighborhoods as if they were uh, not residential zones, as if they were highways or more industrial zones because they are a um, construction site at certain points. So I know that this summer I had a situation which was a close call and thank goodness it wasn't, uh, it was not a fatality, but in building out the washrooms and the gatehouse at Leslie Street Spit, a cement truck that was there backed up without the beeper and I had a fellow with his family there who wrote to me after and it did take me a long time to get to the bottom of it and find the truck, find out why that didn't happen, find out what the protocols were. So there is just a tremendous amount of construction and these are very big trucks. I actually think there's more than just the intersection we're looking at, Councillor. I think it just has to do with the protocols of these firms, most of which are actually on uh, Commissioner Street. And they, um, I, I don't know what the safety protocols are for heavy trucks on these residential streets or in construction zones where there are a lot of public amenities. So I'm hoping that that might come back from your request, but I do think it's time we looked at that and I appreciate you bringing this forward. Thank you. Any, anyone else to speak on the item? 
Seeing none, on the motions in or the motion in Councillor Wong Tam's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, okay I think that we'll gives us that. bills. Yep. If we could just have, I'll just do it to make it faster. That Toronto East York Community Council pass and declare sorry, as uh, point of point of order, Mr. Chair. Sure. I, I, yes. I believe. Um, actually, I apologize. My item has been dealt with. No worries. I apologize for, inter for inter interruption. Thank no, you. no, no, no. Good that you checked. That the Toronto East York Community Council pass and declare as <laughs> bylaws bills. 936 to 942 and 944 to 957 prepared for the November 10, 2020 meeting 20 of the Toronto East York Community Council. All those in favour, oppose. Uh, I need to see the screen. All those in favour, opposed, carried. One more. I move that the Toronto East York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw the confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Toronto East York Community Council acting under delegated authority at meeting 20 on November 10th, 2020. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Members, that completes our work. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Clerk. Thank you. Good job. Bye.